afternoon. I guess you have no mothers. No. <laughs> We're looking at us. <laughs> Half the people aren't here because of Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. It's really interesting. So many people call me and talk to me and tell me, what else must I do before I awaken? I've been practicing Atma Vichara, I've been practicing meditation, I've been practicing everything for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. How come nothing is happening? What do you think? This tells you why. Because you're attached to holidays. There's one reason. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's an attachment. Christmas comes around. I have no time for spiritual life. I have to decorate my Christmas tree. All the holidays that come around, we go off somewhere to see our relatives. And we wonder why we can't awaken completely. This is something to think about. Where your heart is, that's where God is. So if you are attached to anything, mother, father, country, trees, rabbits, cows, whatever, this is what is keeping you back. I am not saying that you can't spend time with those you love or be with those you love. On the contrary. I am saying mentally you have to feel in your heart the oneness of eternity. And until we mature and this comes first in our lives, we will only go so far on the spiritual path. I'm not saying this because I want to see everybody come on a holiday to the satsang. As you know, I couldn't care less if one person came or nobody came. But for your benefit, for your good, think what you put first in your life. If you do not put consciousness first, absolute reality, God, then you will never see the light. You will never completely awaken. You have to virtually give up everything mentally. It's like that story, if you remember, in our biography of a yogi by Yogananda, Lahiri Masai, one of the triune of Yogananda's path. He had been meditating for years, practicing Kriya Yoga, doing all sorts of austerities, He developed many cities, powers. He was able to levitate, but he never became fully awakened. Yet he was so sincere that Babaji appeared before him and told him, look, the reason you never awakened is because in your heart you always wanted to live in a palace with servants, good food, dancing girls, and everything else. So Babaji materialized the palace for a hurry.
and Lahari stayed there for a period of time until he got disgusted and tired of it. Then it disappeared and it was all cooked. The reason Babaji did this for him because he was a very devoted person and spent his life in meditation. But he had one last thing to get rid of, the palace. Therefore, it was materialized before him in order for him to live in it and see if that's the answer. And of course it wasn't. So then it disappeared. Whether the story is true or not makes no difference. It's symbolic. We have things in our mind that worry us, concern us, thinking about the future, thinking about our health or our loved ones, or all these worldly things that come to mind. Yet all the sages have told us you have to let go of these things. Don't worry about your so-called body. Do not concern yourself with your relatives or the world or man's and humanity's a man. Drop it. If you don't drop it, you'll never make any headway. So it is with us. We all have something we're leaning on for support. And we're afraid if we lose that, we'll be finished. How can you ever be finished when you realize you are of a divine nature? that your real state is Brahman, ultimate oneness, pure awareness. No matter what your body and mind seem to be going through, no matter what you think, you can never get rid of your real self. Because your real self just is. Your mind may tell you otherwise. You may be mesmerized in the world, believing you have to have this and you have to have that, and you have to live here and you have to live there, and you have to be with someone that you think you're supposed to be with and you're afraid of being alone or you're afraid of being with the wrong people. <clears throat> many fears, many false beliefs. These are the things that are keeping you back. You and yourself are the universe. You are the whole universe. You are the Self, Omnipresence, all-pervading. This is your real nature. If you just have a glimpse of this, how can you possibly fear anything? If you learn to live in the present and become spontaneous, Forgetting about the past, not concerning yourself about the future, but understanding who you are right now. Can't you see that this will take care of everything? It reminds me of this old story 
about Krishna and Arjuna. They were invited to a rich man's home for dinner. When they entered the home and they sat down at the table, the rich man abused them. He told Krishna he doesn't believe anything he says. His teaching is a waste of time. He told him, why don't you go get a decent job someplace? And Krishna didn't say a word. And they were finished. Krishna blessed them. And he said to them, may your prosperity increase a thousandfold. And may your riches become a million more than you have now. And they left the home. Arjuna wondered about this, but he didn't say anything. The following morning they were invited to breakfast to a poor man's house. And the poor man had no possessions except for a cow. But the poor man followed Krishna's feet when he came in. And he worshipped Krishna and Arjuna. Gave them the last bowl of rice he had. And sang glories to Krishna. When Krishna and Arjuna were leaving the house, Krishna blessed them also. And he said, may your cow drop dead soon. <laughs> and they left. <laughs> and Arjuna couldn't hold it in any longer. And he said, Krishna, tell me what you're doing. <laughs> What's going on? You went, went to the rich man's house and he abused you and you blessed him and told him his wealth will multiply and he goes to the poor man's house who loves you and the only possession is a cow and I told him this cow would drop dead <laughs> what is the meaning of this? and Krishna said you see the more you're attached to him the less of a chance you have for enlightenment so I told the rich man his wealth will increase. This means he'll be attached to his wealth for many, many incarnations. Thousands of incarnations will be, he'll be attached to his wealth. And he will never become enlightened for a long time. Now the poor man, his only attachment was his cow. When he got rid of his cow, he would be finished on this earth and he will become self-realized. So I told him this cow will soon die and he will be free. This story is very significant of the way we live. We have something we own. A person, place, or thing. We can't get out of our mind. We're attached. Because of this attachment, we go through many lives, it appears. And we go through many experiences. Simply because we are attached to something. It can be mental or physical. Even if you hate someone. If you hate someone or something with a passion, that's attachment. You will come back to this earth or to another planet similar to this earth again and again and again. And you will meet this person that you hate so much under different circumstances again and again and again one time he may be your daughter he may be your mother he may be your husband he may be your wife but that person that you despise so much 
will meet you again and again and do things to you in order to upset you. And you will hate again and again. You will never be free until you understand. The understanding is to turn within. To forget about that person. But to see your own reality. To trace the eye thought to the source. After all, it is the I thought that hates and loves, that has attachment to person, place, or thing. When the I thought is transcended, only the self remains. Then your karma is finished. Your body is finished, your world is finished, your God is finished, and you're home free. But as long as you allow a person, place, and thing, and it may be your own body that you're attached to, your own mind, that's person, place, and thing also. As long as you feel deeply those things, You will never become free until you let it go. You have to reconcile yourself with the whole universe. The mineral kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, the animal kingdom, the human kingdom. When you have become friends with the entire universe, you will not have to do Atma Vachara. You will not have to trace the eye or worry about the eye. Just the reconciliation with the universe will free you. After all, when you love everything, unqualified. What else can you do? There's nothing else. The total love of the whole universe kills the ego. For it is the ego that plays the other games with you that makes you love someone special or hate someone special, that makes you despise certain animals and eat them, that makes you think poison ivy is worse than a rose. That causes you to qualify life. A sage sees everything as equal. No thing is worse or better than any other thing. And just by hearing this, allowing it to go into your heart, feeling it, will lead you to an awakening. Think of the problems you think you have. Why are they a problem? What difference does it make? There is nothing in this world that that's important for you to want to 
feel badly when you want to get revenge when you're afraid that something will happen to your body you're concerned about a loved one you're worried about the world situation when you're like that you are assuming responsibility for these things after all you didn't ask to really get born you didn't ask to get born into the family where you were born into the nationality into the religion that you were born into in the city and state and country that you were born into the power that takes care of that knows how to take care of you don't you see there isn't anything you have to do to help in other words God doesn't need your help all you have to do is to take a deep breath and say take it God I'm finished with it I will never worry again I will never be upset over anything again again think what is the worst thing that can possibly happen to you you can die there is no such thing as death you all know this you can lose your fortune you came into this world without a fortune and you're going out without a fortune have no concern about these things karmically you have and you're going through the experiences you have to go through but that's for your body not for you do you not see by now that you are totally free your real nature is absolute goodness power of Brahman absolute reality you are the self the all pervading self what can you possibly fear what can anyone possibly do to you the other day I was speaking to a fellow from Bangladesh and you were aware of the problems they're having there so he told me those problems are for the ignorant I was in the cyclone I was there through all these calamities I laughed because I realized this is really a cosmic joke it appears that God is picking on all the Bangladesh people because they have the worst calamities and I stood my ground he said if I was supposed to leave my body at that time I was well prepared because I had been practicing self-inquiry for many years I had no quorum whatsoever it's because of this I'm here in America I had no concern about coming to America I've been here before but something happened I was able to get a visa and I wound up here without even thinking of coming here that's like the stories I always tell you 
the same things happen in the Nazi death camps all over the world. The suffering is done by the ignorant. Now this may seem strange to you, <clears throat> especially to some people here who don't know me too well. It appears as if I have no compassion. It appears as if I don't care. On the contrary, I care more than you can ever know. I also realize that nothing can happen to anyone. Nothing ever happens to anyone. We go to the example again of looking through a keyhole. When you look through a keyhole, you only see a part of the picture. So you look through a keyhole and you see a guy in Bangladesh getting hit by a cyclone, drowning. And you say, poor soul. And then you're allowed to open the door and now you see the complete picture. You see the previous life, the same fellow was part of the Inquisition in Spain. And it was his job to torture people by drowning them. And you move to the other end of the picture and you see that the person he drowned and himself are both laughing now. The whole thing was a lie. It never happened. Nothing ever happened. It's like you're watching a movie. In the movie there is a war going on. Everybody's being killed, torn to pieces. But then the movie is over. Nothing happened. There were just images on the screen. When you are aware of body mind and you think you are the body mind, then your life is simply a superimposition on the screen of life on consciousness. It appears to be happening to you. But in reality, no thing is happening. You are free. You are whole. You are complete. And there's only one of you. There never was you and me. There's only the one. And that one is absolute reality. You are that one. You are the body of bliss. Wake up. Get rid of all those feelings that are beseeching you to do all these stupid things. <clears throat> Awaken. Be free. Simplify your life. Have no fear. Fear is another thing that you become attached to and it keeps you back. Look at the world. The world is a cosmic joke. 
it appears to be real. The good things, the beautiful things, the horrible things, they're all imposters. This world is a world of duality. For every good, there has to be a bad. It has to balance. For every bad, there has to be a good. For every up, there's a down. For every forward, there's a backward. We can never understand this world. It's too complex. Get out of it. Not by committing suicide, but by transcending the mind and body and awakening to your real self. That's how you get out of it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop paying so much attention to your thoughts. to the world, to your body. Let come what may. Surrender totally to yourself. Yourself is God. Consciousness. Begin to identify with the I am. Not with conditions. Leave conditions alone. As I told you before, you are not responsible for anything. Get rid of your guilt feelings. Turn within. See the truth. Become the truth. Do not look to others for advice, what to do, how to learn. Be a lamp unto yourself, as the Buddha said. All the answers are with you. Some of you are saying, well, what about you, Robert? Can't we come to you for advice? I am a guide, a mirror, for you to see yourself and to guide you within yourself. I can only see you as one way. Perfection. Consciousness. I see you as myself. When you look at me, you're looking in the mirror. What do you see? You're seeing yourself. How are you seeing yourself? as depraved, homely, sickly, as an egomaniac. Drop it. Awaken. There is no thing that wants to hurt you. It is all in your imagination. It is your imagination that causes your problems. <clears throat> now do not let what I tell you make you cynical and sarcastic. While you are in the path of self-discovery, 
you help others. You do what has to be done. It will happen by itself. If you're supposed to feed the homeless, then feed the homeless. It will happen by itself. If you're supposed to go live on top of a mountain and never see civilization again, it will happen by itself. The main thing to understand is that you have absolutely nothing to do with it. You may think you're taking action and you may say to yourself, if I don't do it, no one will. If I don't take care of this thing, everything will fall in on me. What can fall in on you? No thing is ever that bad. What you're really talking about is change. You are attached to a certain condition. And you're afraid of the change. That's what you really mean. But if you've been working on yourself, and you have taught your mind to rest in the heart center. You have trained your mind not to go out. By going out, I mean leaving your heart and going into the world and becoming the world. Then, if your mind is subdued, only joy can come to you due to the fact that what we call the substratum of life is total bliss. When you turn within, you merge with the bliss and you become a body of bliss. The choice is yours. If holidays are so important to you, Easter, look what fools we make of ourselves during Easter. We think we're doing something great. Jesus never knew anything about Easter or Christmas. We make up these holidays. There's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself. But don't make it into a fetish. I remember when I was a young kid, about 12 or 13, my family always wanted me to spend a holiday with them. And at that time, I even felt in my heart, what good would that do? External things do not matter. I used to go downtown to listen to Joel Goldsmith. Where your heart is, that's where God is. Today, think, what is the thing I am attached to? What is so meaningful for me in this world? and realize it is that which is keeping you back. 
let go of it mentally by turning within and realizing that I feel this. I feel I need this. Where does the I come from? Follow the I thread to the source and become liberated. That was my Mother's Day message to you. <laughs> Mama. Any questions? Is God our father or our mother? Is God our father or our mother? Both. No, no, no. If you look to God as a person, God is neither male nor female. But if you look to God as yourself, then God becomes absolute reality, consciousness. Robert, I can't understand the teaching that uh, I have no free will, that I have no choice. Oh. Can you help me on that? Sure. Most of us have such a big ego that we have been trained from childhood. Unless you do this, this will happen. You're responsible. Take responsibility. Make something of yourself. All of this enforces the ego. It has been my experience as well as throughout the scriptures, the ancient scriptures of many countries, that everything that transpires is a result of consciousness. In other words, you have absolutely nothing to do with it. The world as you see it appears to be an emanation of consciousness. Animals are conscious, but they're not self-conscious. They come under the universal law of cause and effect. And they have no idea that they exist, but they do. Somehow, we exist as an animal but we have become self-conscious. We therefore believe that we are responsible for every action we take and we've got free will to do everything we do. But I can assure you that when I lift up my finger to scratch my head, this is all preordained. When a leaf falls from a tree, this is all preordained. Look at it as a movie. Every inch, every iota of the movie has been planned. The writers wrote everything about the script before it became a movie. Even when an actor turns around and blinks. It's written in the script. Life is a script. Everything has been planned. Now we have to have some kind of freedom or we would be automatons, robots. 
we do have freedom. Freedom not to react to any given situation. Freedom to turn within and not to react to anything. But to see the perfect reality within and become free of the whole game. But as long as we're playing the game, we are actors in the play. We're playing our part. But the script has been written before you got here. You're just enacting the part. As long as you believe that you are the actor, you will take on new parts, life after life after life. But as soon as you realize that you're not an actor, you're not a director, you're not a producer. You are none of those things. You are the self that never directed, never produced, and never acted. You are the all-pervading self that is totally free, that has never been bound. You'll be free. Say the script calls for you to get hit by a train in 10 years. <clears throat> so 10 years from now, you're going to be walking on the railroad tracks and the train will hit you. That's the script. The only way to get out of the script is to realize the truth about yourself. That you are not the actor and there's no script. You become the self and you're totally free. How does that grab you? You can, you know, you either. Me either? What do you mean? If there's no you, there's no me. True. So, it don't exist. True. But do you really know that? Or do you know it intellectually? Something you read in the book? No, I didn't read in the book. Did you have that experience? I just realized the way you were talking. That's good. If you can realize this and have your own experience of it, that's the way it should be. I don't so, know what that means. That means you're free. <laughs> There's nobody to be free. Then you're free. Then nobody to be free is freedom. But that's incomprehensible. Of course it is. <laughs> it's supposed to be. <laughs> if you can't comprehend it, it's not the truth. <laughs> This is why I tell you so often, do not believe a word I say, for I speak nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. I didn't mean that. That's good, you should. I mean, I, I didn't mean that it was incomprehensible and <clears throat> that it was unbelievable. It just meant you cannot comprehend it. You cannot, that's true. And that's the way it should be. Why should it be that way? It's Why not? It's the way it is. Why not? There's no, there's no should in it. It's the way it is. Sure. <laughs> Where does the should come from? I put it in. Yeah, we'll take it out. We yeah. don't need it. Okay. <laughs> sure. It's gone. Okay. Um, is that why psychics can uh, see into the future of your life? Because I had something happen when I was 11 years old where I met... Uh, an Indian psychic uh, at a party here in Hollywood. And 
she told me things that I've kept track of that have become true. Psychic only know about your human life. If the psychic is really good, they can probably tell you some things about the human future. But who wants to know that? I want to become free. That's what you should say. I want total liberation. I don't want to know about my continuance of living. I want to die to my body and to my mind and become pure awareness, consciousness. So psychic readings are for the immature. Who cares about the future? There is no future. There is only the now, the present. And I'm dubious about that. <laughs> Why are you dubious about the present moment? Because where does the present come from? Nowhere. Nowhere, there's no present. Okay. <coughs> I don't understand why we have this compulsion to be liberated. <laughs> Because we think we're bound. When you believe you're bound, you have a compulsion to be liberated. But as you awaken, you realize there's no bondage and there's no liberation. You often said, you know, if this and this and this will happen, then you'll be free. And it seems, you know, I just wanted to ask, free from what? Free from bondage to person, place, and thing. But if you don't really feel bound, then you're already free. But I don't close my eyes and see pure consciousness. I mean, nobody does. Nobody does. There's nothing to see. You and There's no, no pure I consciousness that you can see. see. What? There is no pure consciousness for you to see. There has to be a seer to see pure consciousness. And as long as the seer exists, <laughs> you're still bound. <laughs> Uh, also, many of us could probably see that looking over our past lives, that we really didn't do anything. Things just happened. True, but don't dwell on that. Forget about your past life. Okay. Forget about the past completely. Okay. But Turn within and find only yourself to now. to understand this point that we become completely boggled. That you said animals exist under the law of cause and effect. Mm. We do too? As an animal. As a body. As a body. So our practical life, our work life, our working mind, all exists under the laws of cause and effect. Mm. And doesn't that also mean that awakening would also be happening under the laws of cause and effect? No. Cause and effect are under the laws of karma. And karma and cause and effect do not really exist, only in the mind. When there is no mind, there is no cause and effect, there is reality. So rather than look back into the past or try to improve the future, it's better to turn within and become completely clear, become consciousness. And you will not worry about the rest of these things. But it must be from other level of... I mean, there are probably lots of people here who just don't worry. And when things happen, they just happen. They look at them and say, oh, that happened. Even if someone else may judge it to be <coughs> uh, cataclysmic or... There are all degrees of seeing things, sure, of course. The truth is, there are no things to see. No thing no, is happening. No events. No events have ever transpired. 
It's like a dream. Wake up. Forget about the degrees, steps. Either you're awake or you're asleep. Do not get caught up in the degrees. That's what the yoga is all about. When you get involved in yoga practices, meditation, and rest, and you get involved in degrees, and it keeps you back. And you come back life after life as maybe a great yogi. But you're still bound. You don't want to be a yogi. You can be yogi bear. You want to be liberated. And you are liberated. Wake up and forget about everything else. See, I can feel that some of you are lost in your thoughts. When you sit quiet, instead of quieting your mind, you are allowing your thoughts to take hold of you, to control you. (coughs) Can't you see that this is the biggest problem you've got? Coming here often enough, you know, you should not allow your thoughts to run rampant. You should catch your thoughts by observing them, by watching them, and asking to whom do they come, and following it through. Do not allow your mind to control you. It makes no difference how serious you think your problem is, if any. Only your ego has the problem. You should do the same with sense perceptions as with thoughts. Yes. Who's seeing? Who's hearing? Who watches? Who sees? Because the the mind is just sort of like a sense that perceives thoughts. First, it's like a sixth sense. Yes. 
First you observe your thoughts, you watch your thoughts, you become the witness to your thoughts. And then you question, who is the witness? Who is watching? And you go back to I again. Everything, all your troubles are attached to the I. When the I comes down from the brain and rests in the spiritual heart center, the right side of your chest, then your body and mind disappears. And so does the world and everything with it. That should be your practice. Not listening to your thoughts and worrying. Say, for instance, <clears throat> the doctor gives me two days to live. So what? There's nowhere for me to go. So I'll function without a body. Big deal. Function? Sure. Exist. B. Function feels like work or, or production or something. Well, it means liberation to me. What's in the word? It's all semantics. Do not take every word literally. Do we have any announcements? As you heard, today was our first chanting day. We plan on continuing it for a while at least to see how it works. 1.30 uh, uh, next Sunday, and then at least now 1 o'clock the week after that when we have the Pantara. Uh, right now we just have the words to the Muktananda style chanting, but as soon as we get words from other styles, we can add them. Chanting is a wonderful practice. It's an additional spiritual practice you can add on to uh, self-inquiry or any other practice that you have that eases the mind. It's just beautiful. And we hope to continue it. And uh, Prima will tell us about the Bandara. Um, I have a list both for the... Uh to worship yourself, to pray to yourself, to bow to yourself. Because God dwells in you as you. Peace. Have a good Mother's Day. <laughs> Next month is Father's Day. Then is Groundhog Day. <laughs> that is my birthday. <laughs> <laughs>